When you think of movie logos, your mind probably flashes to the studios that have been around forever, like Disney, Paramount, or Universal. These studios are icons with decades of history behind them. In fact, the youngest of those three is Disney at a youthful 100 years. Both Universal and Paramount crossed the century mark way back in 2012. Those are incredible achievements, but this video is about a very different studio, one that didn't emerge until 1978 and didn't survive to see the year 2000. That studio is Orion Pictures, and they steamrolled through Hollywood during the 1980s, releasing some of the most popular and influential films ever made, while also winning a record number of Academy Awards and directly challenging Hollywood's old guard for box office dominance. But despite the studio's tremendous success, a series of bad business decisions and a string of costly flops sent Orion spiraling into financial ruin. They left behind not only a legacy of beloved films, but also one of the most well-regarded logos of all time. For many film fans, that logo became a crucial part of their movie-going experience. How did it all go so wrong so fast? We're taking a deep dive into the Logoverse to uncover the improbable rise and spectacular fall of Orion Pictures. The origin of Orion begins with another film studio, United Artists. That company had the reputation of being hands-off and artist-driven, refusing to interfere in the creative process, similar to the approach that HBO takes today. Allowing their filmmakers such freedom paid off in the 1970s, when United Artists won three straight Best Picture Oscars, a feat no studio had ever accomplished before. Those films were One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in 1975, Rocky in 1976, and Annie Hall in 1977. With that kind of success, United Artists should have cemented their status as a Hollywood powerhouse, but there were serious cracks behind the scenes. Upset with UA's parent company, Transamerica, the top five executives left in 1978 to form their own studio, a revolt that saw many United Artists employees leave as well, following their old bosses to the new company. The five executives, including legendary producer Mike Medavoy, decided to name their studio Orion, choosing the constellation because Orion had five stars. Five executives, five stars. Except Orion actually has seven stars. Or eight with a little artistic interpretation. Okay, so they were movie executives, not astronomers. But in some ways, this small oversight was a preview of the sloppy management that would later plague the studio. Initially, Orion struck a deal with Warner Brothers. This allowed Orion to finance their films and control the advertising while Warner Brothers handled distribution. From the outset, Orion chose to implement the same hands-off approach they perfected at United Artists. This was a studio where filmmakers were allowed to tell their stories with complete creative freedom. Orion wasted no time making its presence known in Hollywood. The studio signed non-exclusive deals with A-listers like John Travolta, Barbara Streisand, James Caan, Francis Ford Coppola, Burt Reynolds, and Jane Fonda. Orion came bursting out of the gate with 15 films in production, only one of which, the Bo Derek and Dudley Moore comedy 10, became a hit. According to Wikipedia, Orion's first 23 films resulted in just a third of them making a profit. The studio struggled to connect with audiences, releasing financial disappointments like The Great Santini, Promises in the Dark, and A Little Romance, while passing on the chance to produce Raiders of the Lost Ark, fearful of its big budget. Despite their failures, the studio did manage to release a few early hits around this time, Dudley Moore was a good luck charm for them. After 10, he gave Orion an even bigger success with one of my favorite comedies, 1981's Arthur. 
co-starring Liza Minnelli and John Gielgud. Made on a budget of $7 million, Arthur charmed audiences all the way to a $97 million box office gross, becoming the fourth most successful film that year. Speaking of comedies, you can't do much better than Caddyshack. In 1980, Orion was hoping their new comedy would duplicate the huge success of Animal House, released just two years prior. But while considered a classic today, Caddyshack met with poor reviews from critics. The box office was still decent, $40 million off a budget of only $6 million. However, compared to the mega success of Animal House, Caddyshack was considered only a modest hit. Orion's initial logo didn't fare much better than their struggling films. Few movie fans have even seen this original design thanks to its remarkably short life. Why Orion didn't think to use the constellation as their logo from the very beginning is a mystery, but they soon course-corrected in 1979. Aside from some minor variations, this second logo endured all the way to the year 1997. Against a space background, eight stars shine brighter than the others, highlighting the constellation Orion. Those eight stars move into a circle and begin to spin. A burst of illumination forms the letter O. The other letters appear next, spelling out the word Orion with a line through every letter. For the first two years, a byline accompanied the logo, indicating the distribution deal between Orion and Warner Brothers. By the end of 1981, Orion had grown frustrated with this arrangement and decided to sever ties. From that point on, the logo would simply freeze frame right before the byline appeared, eliminating any mention of Warner Brothers. The logo also had an excellent theme created by composer Leland Bond, a music veteran who has been working in the business for over 35 years. The fanfare that Bond composed is a great, evocative theme that was often not heard. Orion tended to play the film's opening music over the logo instead, but when Bond's fanfare did play, it was always a welcomed addition that helped make this logo even more distinctive. After their split from Warners, Orion bought a failing movie studio called Filmways. With that purchase, Orion secured the Filmways library, consisting of 500 movies. This allowed Orion to achieve a new level of independence and they officially became a mini-major, which is a term in Hollywood for a studio that's smaller than the heavy hitters like Universal or Paramount, but still has significant resources and is more than able to compete at the box office. In June of 1982, Orion Pictures was rechristened as Orion Pictures Corporation. For the next 10 years, the story of Orion is really a tale of two extremes. Their hits were critically praised, genre-defining classics. But the studio missed big and missed frequently, releasing expensive flops that devoured cash. 1989 was a catastrophic year for the studio. The company took a minuscule 5% of the domestic box office, sending them to last place among the larger Hollywood studios. 1990 turned out to be an equally awful year. Even the massive success of Dances with Wolves wasn't enough to cancel out the lost revenue. Between the box office flops, general mismanagement, and years of creative accounting, Orion soon found itself on life support. At the 1991 Academy Awards, host Billy Crystal joked, Reversal of Fortune is about a woman in a coma, Awakenings is about a man in a coma, and Dances with Wolves was released by Orion, a studio in a coma. On December 11, 1991, Orion filed for bankruptcy. This delayed the release of multiple Orion films, including Robocop 3. And if ever there was a film that can best be described as a last gasp, it is most definitely Robocop 3. In 1997, MGM bought what was left of the studio, securing ownership of Orion's vast library, now consisting of 2,000 films. 
Orion's last release as an active company came in 1999. After a remarkable 20-year roller coaster ride, Orion Pictures faded into history. By all accounts, the Orion stars were permanently dimmed. But in 2014, film buffs received an unexpected surprise. MGM showed the classic Orion logo in front of their sequel to The Town That Dreaded Sundown. The logo served as a promotional gimmick, MGM hoping to create a sense of nostalgia among horror fans. While this reappearance didn't mean that Orion was back, 2022 would see the official return of Orion Pictures, now rebranded to focus on inclusive storytelling. Despite a short history compared to many other Hollywood studios, Orion left a massive impact, many of their films just as popular today as when they were released. For a particular generation of movie fans, the classic Orion logo will always hold a special place in film history. I'm Michael Cahill, thanks so much for watching. Feel free to share your memories of the Orion logo in the comments below along with any suggestions for future videos. Until next time.